Konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, bringing you episode 149 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. So good news this week on the Power Rangers movie front, because basically the movie's actually happening. <laughs> uh, I mean, really up to this point, we begin press releases and some casting information, but we actually got hard evidence that a movie is being made. Uh, specifically, we have pictures coming out. Um, and of course, we got some more information talking about who's actually involved with the project. We got some information uh, about the plot and so forth. And there's a lot to go ahead and digest. Uh, I don't want to go over every single little thing that's come out, but I'd like to go ahead and cover a, a few things with you guys uh, and give my impressions at this point. Because, you know, here's the thing. When we got the director attached to it, we got some of the actors, I was a little bit skeptical because I'm like, you know, you got a director who you know, really hasn't done that much. You got actors that haven't done that much. Uh, but since that time, and with what's coming out this week, you know, I, I'm still a little bit skeptical, but, you know, I frankly feel a little bit better when I look at the talent that's behind this. Um, so let's talk about, let's talk about the article first that came out from comicbook.com. Uh, basically, this is information talking about uh, who's in the movie. Uh, as a lot of you have been pointing out to me, that Elizabeth Banks is going to be playing the role of Rhea Repulsa. You know, this woman means nothing to me, and from a lot of I've seen of her, just some clips and all that, I'm not sold on her being as Rita, but who knows? I mean, really, when I started looking her up on IMDb and everything, the most significant role that I was uh, looking at was like, oh, she was the secretary in the Spider-Man movies, uh, which isn't saying much, but I think a lot of other people know her from Hunger Games, which is something I refuse to watch, so, you know, there there you go. Um, I don't know, again, what how good she is as an actress and all that uh, from the pro her projects as a whole, but from what I've seen, I'm, I'm just not terribly impressed. Again, that's just kind of where I am here. Um now, a few other things have been coming up as far as who's actually involved with the project. As we know, Dean Israelite is going to be our director. Um, but it turns out that this film has really no less than five writers attached to it. Now, typically that is a bad thing. Too many, you know, cooks spoil the broth and whatnot. Um, but when we actually do look at a couple of these films, you know, we, we already talked about Zack and Ashley who did X-Men First Class and Thor again, people who were, you know, adept at, at, these were good science fiction superhero stories, and they were, of course, origin stories, X-Men First Class being an ensemble piece. So, I have confidence that Zack and Ashley know what they're doing when they're writing the film. Now, I don't know to what effect that John Gates, uh, Burke Sharpless, and Matt uh, Sazama, and, and if I did get those names wrong, I apologize for that. I don't know how much they actually have influence on the script, if they touched it up, if they've added jokes to it, worked on some action sequences or dialogue or whatever. But when you look at the credits of all three people combined, uh, which is Dracula Untold, Kong Skull Island, and Real Steel, I'm not that enthused because, well, Kong Skull Island, I don't even think it's come out yet, and Real Steel and Dracula Untold, just, I, I've, from what I've read, and I haven't actually seen those movies personally, they were not well received for their writing. Uh, maybe a couple other things, but ne not for their writing. Oh, and Max Landis, that's another name. That, that's six names, who did Chronicle, which was another superhero film, but of course, I've heard negative things about that as well. So, we got six writers attached to this film, and I don't know what that means exactly, uh, why we have six writers, but we have six writers, and what I'm hoping is that Zach and Ashley wrote the entire script, and the others just came in and tweaked it a little bit. That's kind of what I'm hoping that the spine of the story is going to follow uh, what Zach and Ashley put out there. And again, they are experienced based on what they've done before. Uh, of course, uh, you know, the producers we have, uh, Haim Saban is going to be in there. Brian, and again, I can't get his name right, uh, Kasintini, who currently is doing Dino Charge, which is not that bad. And then a couple of people who've worked on uh, the Twilight Saga, the Fault in Our Stars, and the Maze Runner franchise. I'm going to have the article posted in the comments section, uh, so if you guys want to go ahead and take a look at that, go ahead. I'm not going to read off everything here. But as far as the producers are concerned, you know, you got Saban. I really have no positive or negative feelings towards him as a producer. Uh, the, Brian, he's doing a great job on Dino Charge, so no real problems there. But the others, you know, here's the thing. 
The Fault in Our Stars, I, I've heard that was a terrible film. The Twilight Saga, I don't think I need to say anything about that. And The Maze Runner was just average and okay. Now, the only thing I can say is that when you actually look at these films, at least two of them, well, one of them is an established franchise, one of them is trying to become a franchise, and The Fault in Our Stars, I have no idea what that's trying to do at this point. So when I look at the production, what it tells me is they at least got people that know how to plan for sequels in a series of films. So that's at least one positive there that I can go ahead and say is that maybe they're they're getting these guys on board because they know what it takes to you know get a franchise going to have a series of films. Because I mean I don't know how many films are in that Twilight Saga, but damn that thing went on forever. Um, okay. So we do have executive producers, and here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, Allison Sirimer, uh, again, hope I got that right, who's doing Hunger Games and Rogue One Star Wars Story. And I'll tell you this right now, um, again, I'm not interested in Hunger Games at all, but it is a franchise. Um, but Rogue One, uh, you know, just to get somebody who's working on Star Wars as well, I think is, is a big win for the franchise, uh, because it gets somebody who knows how to work uh, with science fiction, knows the core elements of it. Uh, and, of course, uh, Brett O'Connor, who is doing the executive producer on Warcraft, who I've heard nothing but good things about, uh, the film particularly, based on the trailer and everything. So, again, another person who's done science fiction or in the science fiction. So, so far, a lot of this is good, because we're talking about people who've worked on big-budget films, franchise films, uh, and science fiction films primarily. Uh, music's going to be composed by the same guy who did Age of Ultron, so that's good. Interesting, though, that our costume designer is Kelly Jones. And the reason I bring this up is that apparently Kelly Jones has worked on two, 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 a film and a television series, Straight Out of Compton and Sons of Anarchy, both of which I have not seen, so I can't comment on the quality of those shows. However, both, show, uh, both the movie and the show are period pieces. Uh, Sons of Anarchy, I believe, takes place in the 60s, and Stray of Compton is in the early 90s. And what's interesting about that, just when, when I think about that, is, again, you got, you know, a costume designer who's primarily worked on these big period pieces, and we got the Power Rangers movie, which I don't even know if it is or is not going to be a period piece at this point. I, I'll uh, there's a picture that you guys are looking at. I'm going to talk more in depth about that to towards the end right here. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a period piece. So I wonder why they bring in people that have worked on period pieces before. But Power Rangers is apparently going to be said modern day. Now, nothing is said in stone. Nobody has said the time frame for this film, whether it's going to be in 1993, uh, 2016, modern day, the not-too-distant future. None of that's been established. But it would occur to me if you got somebody who's done period piece costumes that you're going to have at least one time frame explored in this film uh and again we'll talk more about that as we go ahead and talk about uh the the, the picture that you're seeing here um something else i want to go ahead and bring up here is that we got a stunt coordinator who's worked on the dark knight that to me is a positive thing um, so something else that we have here that, that I definitely want to go ahead and bring up is the people who are in charge of the suit design visual effects is, uh, Weta Workshop, or Weta Workshop, whatever you want to go ahead and call it. Uh, this is the, this is the same group of people that did Avatar and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So the people who are in charge of the Na'vi and Gollum and Smaug and all that stuff, they're doing the special effects for Power Rangers. And that, to me, is like the biggest news of all. Is that you got these people who are definitely experienced. And not only experienced with, with CG, but convincing CG and model work. Yes, there was a lot of model work that was done in the Hobbit films. But I would believe, given that the way the budget is, it actually might be advantageous for them to do model work. As I am told that if you do it right, it can be cheaper than some CG. Uh, and of course, that's the kind of stuff that happened on the Lord of the Rings films. But that happened more than a decade ago. And as we know, the, the Hobbit films was primarily CG. Nevertheless, the, the point I'm getting at is that you have an established company for special effects that's done great work, uh, award-winning work, Oscar-winning work at that, working on the Power Rangers film. And, and to me, that's that's the biggest win that we have so far uh, in the announcement in the news here. 
Um, you know, the comicbook.com uh, article also talks about the plot, which, you know, frankly, you can re- you can take the plot that they have here and re- put on any Power Rangers season, and it's just as valid. Uh, it's very bare bones. It doesn't give us much. What it does sound like is we are getting an origin story. We are getting, uh, you know, how the Power Rangers came together. And, you know, here's something of note is that, now, I can't find the article that I read this in. I tried searching, guys. Maybe you read it. Maybe you have it. Uh, I could not find it to go ahead and, and, and go over with you guys here. But basically, I read an article uh, that was talking about the film. That, that Again, it's not the comicbook.com article. That was talking about how the film was going to establish the Rangers and how they came together as friends. And that the inciting incident that brought them together as Rangers, or it brought them together as friends, is becoming Power Rangers. Which is opposed to the series where they were all friends before they came became Power Rangers. Now, I really don't have a preference one way or another, uh, you know, on how it worked in the series. If they're all friends, that's great. That's fine. Uh, you know, no big deal. And we've had later seasons where they're not friends and they all get introduced to each other, um, you know, w- w- once they become Power Rangers. And that's what bring brings them together. Um, and, and what I had also read in this is that it's going to be a rough transition. And again, I can't find the article, but basically the, the way I interpret it is it's going to be a rough transition and that each of these Rangers have these different uh, personalities that just don't work together as opposed to, again, the original team. I believe one of the casting sides talked about Jason said that he had gotten to a, a major car accident and that struck him of a lot of his confidence and becoming the Red Ranger is going to help him bring his confidence back, if I recall the, sli- uh, the sides correctly. And, you know... I'm all for a darker and grittier version of Power Rangers. What I, I, what I, here's what I would like to go ahead and say, and whether I truly believe it or not, you know, I have to actually see the film itself. I kind of feel feel that if we're reintroducing Power Rangers to a new generation and we're reliving the Mighty Morphin era at that, we need to be a little bit lighthearted in this, like. I don't know. Having Jason's backstory as, you know, wrapping his uh, car around a tree and then having to, to step up to be Lear, that's good drama and all that. But I, I, I just wonder if you could do that another way while still retaining the spirit of the original series. Um, because it just comes off like it's going to be angsty, it's going to be brooding and all that. Um, almost sounds like some of these characters might be, I'm not going to say emo or anything, but just kind of moody um, in a way. And... Uh, and, and let's look at the picture. I mean, look. At, I mean, you guys have been looking at the picture the whole time I've been talking. But I mean, look at just the way they're posed, the way they're 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 um, supposed to look. I mean, particularly look at the actors for Trini and Jason. You know, they just don't look very comfortable with each other. And I'd imagine this is not the actors themselves uh, that are posing, but it is the actors as their characters. Uh, because look at our character for Billy, how he's dressed, how he's you know more proper than the others, got his arms folded, standing up straight, where they was kind of slouching, slacking off, um, Kimberly's got, you know, her hand on her hips, and Trini's got this all don't come at me kind of look, um, and, and you know, again, talk about the picture here, it doesn't look like a period piece, other than the flannel, but, you know, other than that, it doesn't scream 90s, it does look like a more modern look, but these rangers just look so... Bleak. I mean, what you'll also notice is that they're not wearing their ranger colors. Um, and, and even if they are, they're obviously mute. I mean, look at Trini's jacket. I mean, I guess that's, I mean, it's a green jacket, but it's got maybe a yellowish tint to it. You look at Kimberly, she's got a maroon undershirt that I guess could be considered as pink. But man, they, they don't look... I mean, look at the original images of the Rangers and publicity stunts, how happy they were, how together they were, how bright and colorful they were. Um, Again, I don't mind dark and brooding or anything. It just seems to me that, to me, if it was up to me, what what I would do is start off, if you're going to do the Mighty Morphin era in a movie, you got to have that bright, happy feeling. This is a great thing. And maybe as you progress, that's when you get this angst, you get this mood 
uh, established because of the enormity of the threat. It seems to be the inverse, based on what I'm understanding, is that they're going to be kind of like moody and standoffish, whatever, but becoming rangers makes them confident, makes them friends, which is great, but I just kind of want to see them go from, from light to dark as opposed from dark to light, if that makes any sense. And again, all this is speculation on my part. I could be completely wrong about this, but just... From what I read in that other article and what I'm looking at in this picture, it doesn't necessarily seem like everything's going to be sunshine and roses when we start off. Um, and, and, you know, that could be a good thing where, you know, they have to uh, triumph as Power Rangers to make things better as opposed to things are great, Rita screws them up, and then they got to go ahead and clean up the mess and the world has changed forever, which, again, is really how, how it should be. I don't know. I don't know. I... I I just thought when we would get the the image of our new Power Rangers that I would be able to look at the image and say, yep, that's the Power Rangers. I look at this image and I can't say that. Um, I'm not saying that they're bad. I just I look at this image and I don't see the Power Rangers. I see five angsty teenagers that were told to, told to pose with each other. I don't see the, the saviors of humanity. I, I don't see the greatest superhero team ever. Um... And, and again, I could be completely wrong. I just, I just get an odd feeling when I look at this. Uh, to where, again, I, I like a dark and brooding. You know, I like more realistic. I want to go ahead and see. I want to see basically, um, because if, if we equate, let's equate my, the Mighty Morphin era to the Adam West Batman. I want to see a Dark Knight version of the Mighty Morphin. Um, but even even as that is, I just kind of think that the Rangers should not be so depressing. Uh, I guess that's the best way to say it. This image is, is just kind of depressing. I, I don't know, guys. Um, I'm very curious on what everybody out there there thinks about this. But 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 let me go ahead and kind of wrap up just, just my overall thoughts right here. Um, I'm a little confused about some of the people that have been attached to this project. Other people, I'm kind of pleased to see that they're there. I'm definitely pleased that Weta is in charge uh, of the special effects. That's probably one of the best things that's going for this film. Because even if it sucks with the dialogue and the story, at least it's going to go ahead and look good. And as we all know with Avatar, it's a story as old as time, but pff, damn did it look good. Um, the plot, we don't get much into it. I wish they would clarify if this is a period piece or not. Uh, because that will also answer a lot of questions about the continuity, which is something they are not addressing whatsoever. But given that Billy is black and Zach is Asian and Trini is Latina, um, well, then I don't know what really what that means. But it's not it's not the same five teenagers with attitude that we had seen before. Uh, and again, as far as the image is concerned, it's great to see them together. Damn, I just wish they would smile. They didn't look so depressing. But who knows? Uh, you know, they're filming right now, which is great. We still have a March of 2017 release day. And I just hope, hope, and, and guys, you know, I, I did this to myself, I guess. But, man, I hope this movie gets released in Japan. Because, boy, I, if it doesn't get released in Japan, I'm getting the first flight to, like, Honolulu or LAX or, or Seattle or whatever just so I can watch the damn thing. Because, oh, boy, um... Man, I'm going to feel bad if I can't watch this movie when it comes out uh, over here in Japan. Because I'm here for at least another year, folks. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so that's that's where we are uh, with the Power Rangers. What do you guys think? Uh, again, I'll have the link to the article. Read it. Tell me what you think about What do you think of the image? What are your upcoming thoughts about the film? Uh, just leave the comments below. I definitely want to hear uh, what everybody's thinking about it. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good evening in the tavern is now closed.